Jeff Jackson. So this is another projected winner here. Um, let's get over to his speech. This is one of the biggest nights for our family's lives and for you to be here and to share this moment with you is an absolute privilege and a joy and I'm so grateful for all of you. Right now, there are hundreds of elections all across the state where votes are being counted and the outcome has not been determined. But in our race, we know the outcome. And it is the honor of a lifetime to tell you that we have won. good to say. I felt good to say. When you run for office, you learn how many people it really takes to help you win. How many people have to come together. And it starts with family. And you all just got to see mine, my wife of 10 years, Marissa Jackson is right here. Kids, Hayden, Owen, and Avery are here. I think some of you may have seen Avery on TV saying, vote for my dad. I'm so glad you took her advice. <laughs> Campaigning is as hard on the family as it is on the candidate. And when you do something like this, you learn how strong your family really is. We made a decision to run as a family. We ran as a family, and now we have won as a family. Yeah. Our campaign team, they're all here with you right now. This is the hardest working group of young people you've ever met. They just did seven days a week for nine months straight. They stayed focused, they stayed positive, they stayed pretty cheerful, and they stayed united. Team, we simply would not have won without you. I am so grateful. Please join me in thanking our campaign team. I want everyone here to know about our amazing volunteers because so many volunteers are here with us tonight. Because of you, we reached tens of thousands more voters than we otherwise would have reached. You were the grassroots army for this campaign, and it worked! Yeah. And finally, Finally, I want to thank my opponent, Pat Harrigan. Pat Harrigan is a good person. He ran a good campaign. He decided to step forward and run, which is not easy, for the same reasons that he joined the military and served overseas. It's because he loves our country and he wants what's best for it. Please join me in thanking my opponent. Tonight's victory, as most of you know, is in a new district. One that's never existed, that's very rare. A new district is an opportunity for a new start, for a new generation, and for a new set of expectations. I want to use this office to do important things for the people who live here. And that's not a short list. There are a lot of things that need to be done. But I want to do that work in a way that raises your expectations about what you deserve from people in this position. Because your expectations are really low. <laughs> They've never been lower. 
And that's a problem because there are elements of this job that have never been more important. I believe that we are still in a moment, unlike any of us has seen in our lifetimes, where there are strong political forces that would end your power as voters if it meant they never had to concede another election. If it meant power for them in perpetuity. Raising your expectations starts with being honest with you about this moment that we're in and then telling you what we're going to do about it and here's what we're going to do about it. We're going to start by making explicit our commitment to certain basic principles like honesty and decency. Principles that should have nothing to do with partisanship. But that's not enough, because as far apart as we are today, we have to come back together. We have to. One of the ways we're going to do that is by seeing a shared future that we want to achieve more than we want to fight each other. And that means, in addition to the day-to-day -day back and forth of politics, People in my position have to do a better job of laying out a positive vision for our future. Something that we can see and believe in and almost grasp. And it doesn't have to be complicated. How about this? Let's have a country where all of our children can read well. Let's live in a country where young people can find careers that will let them raise a family and where those families can afford to buy a home and where that home is in the town where they work. And where that home is energy independent and when someone in that family gets sick, they can get taken care of without running the risk of losing that home. That is not the country we live in right now, but it can be. And that's a positive vision that most people can get behind. It's a vision we can accomplish this decade. And imagine if we did the dramatic upgrade that it would mean for our country. None of those goals are radical. None of them are partisan. They are simple and positive and fundamentally about giving you more control over your lives. Because if you march out into this life and you can't read well, other people are going to end up controlling your life for you. If you can't afford a home in the town where you work, you just lost control over something really important because now you are renting or commuting forever. And if our homes are energy independent, then we can tell the oil companies and the oil countries that they don't get to control our lives anymore. And I'll tell you how we get it done. The biggest thing that we can do to actually achieve the future we want, give you as voters more power. Give you more power. Politicians have done everything they can. And you're listening think to Jeff Jackson to speak uh, giving from his you. speech saying tonight's victory is uh, in a new district offering an opportunity for a new again. start and a Those new set of expectations, uh, basically vowing to up the expectation for elected officials in that seat. Yeah, we heard that in that in that speech and obviously making reference to this newly created district. So uh, this is that district 14. We saw that came about from this latest census and the growth that we've seen in the state and, and this new district that was added.